Here's more wrestling news for November 4th, 2022. And we're starting off this afternoon with WWE NXT, which this week cut five superstars from its roster. Bodie Hayward, Sloane Jacobs, Erica Yan, Ru Fang, and Demarius Griffin are now all ex-superstars, but there are more cuts expected in the near future. That's according to Dave Meltzer, who reports that WWE's strategy is to hold regular releases of NXT talent who simply do not progress as quickly as the company wants. Talent will be judged every six months and every year, and anyone who isn't on TV within two years of signing will be released. Four of the five superstars released this week had not shown the required level of improvement, but in Hayward's case, it was also reported that he had been a handful to work with behind the scenes. Now, he and the rest of the released talent will have to make a name for themselves outside WWE, and will have to wait and see who doesn't impress higher-ups the next time these cuts are made. One person who certainly doesn't have to worry about losing his job is Randy Orton, who celebrated the 20th anniversary of his WWE debut earlier this year. In May, though, Orton suffered a back injury, which has kept him on the shelf ever since, and we now know more about how this affected WWE's plans. WrestleVotes reports that had Orton healed up sooner, the plan was for him to turn on Matt Riddle almost immediately after coming back, starting a feud between the two. The idea of Orton and Riddle feuding had been discussed for some time prior to Orton's injury, but WWE had decided that the teaming of RK-Bro was too popular to justify the turn. Unfortunately for WWE, Orton's recovery process has been longer than first feared, and instead of a feud, Riddle has regularly paid tribute to his best friend and uses the RKO in matches. There's still no word on when Orton will return, though it's believed he'll be out for the rest of 2022, but it's possible that the Viper could still turn on the original bro when he's finally back in the ring. In 2017, Maria Kanellis returned to WWE and, during this run with the company, became the first ever pregnant champion, winning the 24-7 title in that time. For many, a pregnancy is a source of great joy, and while Maria was thrilled to be with child again, the WWE fans weren't so on board. Speaking to Steve Fall of NBC Sports Boston, Maria said that she received a ton of hateful messages from fans both before and after her son Carver was born. During that time when I was having so many problems of like getting into the mode of motherhood and like seeing all the comments of like, oh, your husband is just this and you're just that and how dare you have a kid and saying things about my daughter. She was like a couple of days old and I'm getting like death threats. It's like, come on people, it's wrestling. And there's plenty of other talented people out there that can fulfill that need for you. It's just right now, I gotta take some time for me and my family. Since being released from WWE, Canellis has worked for ROH, Impact Wrestling, and most recently AEW, and fans with hateful comments about her children should keep them to themselves. During this week's AEW Dynamite, Colt Cabana challenged Ring of Honor World Champion Chris Jericho in the former's first match on TV in close to a year. Many fans were thrilled to see Cabana back on TV, but those fans may have to be prepared to be disappointed next week. According to a report by Mike Johnson of PW Insider, it was revealed that Colt Cabana's appearance was planned as a one-off event. Instead of this being some grand return to AEW TV, Cabana remains a part of the Ring of Honor roster, despite the show not having a TV deal at this time. Cabana said earlier this week that he doesn't know if he'll be at Final Battle, ROH's next event scheduled for next month, and if he isn't booked, then it may be months before we see him next wrestle, despite his return this week. Cabana may not be returning to AEW programming anytime soon, but it wasn't just the AEW fans who watched this week's match closely. WrestleVotes reports that the match went noticed in Stamford, a nod to WWE headquarters. While Cabana has worked for WWE before, his brief run as Scotty Goldman hardly showed off how good he could be, and it's entirely possible that WWE could bring him back. If that did happen though, then it would likely jeopardize talks of bringing CM Punk back, as the former AEW World Champion had nothing but harsh words for his ex-best friend at the All Out Scrum. With Triple H open to bringing Punk back, believing he would be big business, rehiring Cabana may not be the wisest move, but it's telling that WWE has had their eye on him, even if it's just for this week. Before this week, Cabana's most recent AEW match had been a November 2021 Dynamite loss to Brian Danielson, who has been with the company for over a year. In that time, Danielson has become a major star on TV and something of a locker room leader in the wake of All Out, but he's yet to hold gold. 
In recent weeks, Danielson has been arguing with Wheeler Yuta. Danielson and Yuta had a shoving match before Claudio Castagnoli broke it up last week. Taking to his experience podcast, Jim Cornette gave his two cents and blasted AEW for what he considers nonsensical booking. So now the baby faces are fighting amongst themselves, and if it means that Danielson will eventually turn out of this, then great. I don't care how it happens, but I don't have any confidence that this is what they're setting up. I think the baby faces are just arguing because Tony Khan thinks it might be swell. What do we determine now? Is it six or seven hundred thousand that love the whole elite thing, the whole Harpo, a Cornette nickname slash reference to Harpo Marx for Kenny Omega, and love all the play wrestlers? They're going to love Yuta because he's been embraced by all their favorites, and everyone that wants to watch Major League Wrestling program on national television are sitting there wondering, what the f is this? Danielson has spent his entire time with AEW so far as a babyface, but while Cornette is eagerly anticipating a heel turn from the former WWE champion, he has no faith in Tony Khan to pull it off. Back to WWE as Sasha Banks and Naomi continue to be missing from WWE TV ever since their walkout during the May 16th episode of Raw. There was a time that fans thought the pair were done with WWE, but that's no longer the case, and a recent move has had fans speculating about an imminent return. The former WWE Women's Tag Team Champions had been scheduled to attend the upcoming Vulture Festival on November 12th, but that is no longer the case. In an update, the festival said that an unforeseen scheduling conflict resulted in Banks and Naomi being pulled, and though a refund has been offered, the festival gave no clue as to what came up. Of course, this sudden change has led fans to speculate that this will be when the pair will be returning to WWE, even though November 12th falls on a Saturday, with no WWE programming scheduled. Perhaps Banks and Naomi will return on the November 11th SmackDown, but whatever the case, it may not be much longer before they're back on our screens. At the time of their infamous walkout, it was said that the pair had a confrontation with Vince McMahon, who was, at the time, head of WWE Creative. The Banks Naomi walkout would come just over a month before McMahon stepped down from his roles and just two months before his retirement from WWE entirely. While speaking on Smack Talk, Dutch Mantel spoke about his former boss and alleged that McMahon had really given up caring during his last days as chairman. Mantel's argument that McMahon was only concerned about making money and, given that WWE was making record profits seemingly despite what he did, the now ex-CEO left it up to others to figure out the booking. Summing things up, Mantell said that McMahon was likely burned out, arguing that you would be too if you'd been running a wrestling promotion for as long as Vince did. Since McMahon's retirement, business has been booming and WWE's morale has soared, but as far as Mantell is concerned, all that mattered for Vince in the end was the money in his account. In 2021, after over a decade with WWE, Tyler Breeze was released from the company as one of the many jobs lost due to budget cuts. Last month, Breeze made a surprise appearance on WWE's The Bump, but don't expect Prince Pretty back on our screens on a regular basis. During an interview on the sessions, Breeze's good friend and fellow Canadian Sean Spears was asked about Tyler and said that his in-ring career is over. He can still go, he still does everything, but I say to him, hey man, getting ready for a second run? And he goes, nah, I'm retired. In that same interview, Spears said he hopes Breeze isn't done with wrestling, which is the case, as it was during the bump that Breeze announced that he's now working as a performance center trainer. If Breeze is finished with being a wrestler, he leaves a former NXT Tag Team Champion, FCW Tag Team Champion with Roman Reigns of all people, and an FCW Heavyweight Champion, and we wish him well in his new role with WWE. And we're ending today with WrestleMania 39, which fans hope will be headlined by Roman Reigns vs. The Rock. The match has been teased by both men, who are part of the legendary Anawaii wrestling family, and now one member of the bloodline has picked his side. When asked about the dream match, Lance Anawaii said that WWE will do anything to make the match happen, and the MLW star predicts a victory for Reigns due to his youth and strength. In the past, it's been said that The Rock is a lock for WrestleMania 39, but we'll have to wait until next April to see who is the true head of the table.